I am here continuing with my reading of the standard works and what this series is is I am reading through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in chronological order according to events, not according to publication or volume, so as I go along I will be skipping around just a little bit. Right now I am still reading in Genesis, this is chapter 48, and this will include uh, portions from the Joseph Smith translation, and this is an inspired translation or correction of the Bible done by Joseph Smith to restore those portions of the Bible that had been lost over the years. So let us get into chapter 48. Jacob tells of the appearance of God to him in Luz. He adopts Ephraim and Manasseh as his own children. Jacob blesses Joseph and puts Ephraim before Manasseh. Seed of Ephraim shall become a multitude of nations. Israel shall come again into the land of their fathers. Okay, here we go. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob, and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself, and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz, in the land of Canaan, and blessed me, and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. So Jacob here is kind of giving his last testimony to Joseph. Now what follows here, verse 5 and verse 6, this is the portion where we have a lengthy uh, addition in the Joseph Smith translation that I will then read. So let us read these two verses first. Verses 5 and 6 we have, And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. And thy issue, which thou begettest after them, shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died. I'm <coughs> sorry. After the name of their brethren in their inheritance. Okay, that's the end of verse 6. Sorry, got a little carried away there. Here is the Joseph Smith translation of these two verses. Note the additional information. And now, of thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, behold, they are mine, and the God of my fathers shall bless them, even as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be blessed, for they are mine. Wherefore, they shall be called after my name, therefore they were called Israel. And, the, and thy issue which thou begettest after them shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren and their inheritance in the tribes. Therefore they were called the tribes of Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob said unto Joseph, When the, Lord, when the God of my fathers appeared unto me in Luz in the land of Canaan, he sware unto me that he would give unto me and unto my seed the land for an everlasting possession. Therefore, O my son, he hath blessed me in raising thee up to be a servant unto me, in saving my house from death, in delivering my people, thy brethren, from famine which was sore in the land. Wherefore, the God of thy fathers shall bless thee, and the fruit of thy loins, that they shall be blessed above, their, above thy brethren, and above thy father's house. For thou hast prevailed, and thy father's house hath, hath, bowed, <coughs> hath bowed down unto thee, even as it was shown unto thee, before thou wast sold into Egypt by the hands of thy brethren. Wherefore, thy brethren shall bow down unto thee from generation to generation, unto the fruit of thy loins forever. For thou shalt be a light unto my people to deliver them in the days of their captivity from bondage, <clears throat> and to bring salvation unto them when they are altogether bowed down unto sin. Now, there's a couple of things going on here. First, he's not just claiming Reuben, he's not just claiming Ephraim and Manasseh to be his sons, but he's giving them equal inheritance as his sons. That's what this is. That is why later on we will read of the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. They were made equal members of the house of Israel. 
any other sons that Joseph had would be considered part of their tribes. Then Jacob rehearses again the covenants made between him and God. And he reminds Joseph of the prayer of the dreams he had, how he how his brothers would bow down to him. And you recall when, well, you may recall when we read about that, I, I pointed out that Jacob kept everything in his heart. He kept it in his mind. He he, he thought about it. He kind of rebuked Joseph for being a little too honest. Maybe say you should have kept that to yourself. But he knew what it meant, and this is him acknowledging it. Finally. That last verse, for thou shalt be a light unto my people to deliver them in the days of their captivity from bondage and to bring salvation unto them when they are all together bowed down under sin. It wasn't any descendant of Joseph that delivered them from Egypt. What this is talking about is today the tribe of Ephraim, they, had the, they still have the birthright. And it was through the tribe of Ephraim that God performed the restoration. Delivering modern Israel from the bondage of sin. That is a prophecy of the last days and the restoration of the gospel. But then we go back to the King James here, verse 7. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way, when yet there was but a little way to come unto Ephrath. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrath, the same is Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom, whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto, unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath shewed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between, his eye, from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. So what's going on here? First of all, it says that uh, he could not see, but it also says, uh, I not so thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath shewed me also thy seed. If you can't see, then that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But even though it's not in the footnotes here, I actually have a copy of the complete Joseph Smith translation. I did, I did look this up. And according to the Joseph Smith translation, it shouldn't say that he could not see, but that he had a hard time seeing. So it wasn't that he was completely blind, but that he was like very nearsighted. He could only see up close and that's why he brought them he says he brought them out from between his knees in other words Jacob had them up close to him so he could look at them but then again he, he places them so he wants Jacob to give a blessing to him so he places them so that Jacob's right hand will be on Manasseh and his left hand on Ephraim because Ephraim is the youngest and the right hand would go on the oldest you know this is kind of the, sim the symbology of it all and Jacob instead of putting his hands out like this put his hands out like this so that his right hand was on Manasseh and his left hand on Ephraim. So let us continue this, verse 15. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name be named on them. And the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand on his head. 
And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. And he also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, <coughs> in thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Okay, a couple of things here. First, so he crossed his hands to bless them, and he, he blessed them with the blessings of the Abrahamic covenant of the, of the birthright. But because the right hand was on Ephraim, Ephraim was the one that was set above Manasseh. They both, as children of Joseph, kind of partook of this birthright. But Ephraim was set above. And Joseph, he tried to pick up Jacob's hands and said, wait a minute, no, 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 this, this is how it's supposed to be. And Jacob, mm, no, I know, I know he's older, but his younger brother is the one that gets the birthright. We're not told why. There's no explanation. But it's a very interesting thing. The other thing to note is what it said right at the end there and now let me flip back here real quick oh yeah i've given thee one portion above thy brethren which i took by the hand of the amorite with my sword and all that so gave him one portion of other in other words joseph gets a double portion he has two tribes in israel instead of one all the other brothers are a single tribe joseph is two tribes that's what it means by double portion he took by the sword and the bow. Now, you remember the story of Dinah and Shechem and how they destroyed Shechem. And Jacob got all mad at him because uh, he said, you know, you're going to cause a war between me and the people. And he, Jacob didn't want to fight him. And I, I, I mentioned at the time, and I'll mention it again here, that in the book of Jasher, it describes a war between the sons of Jacob and the Amorites in the area. Now, it's a bit ridiculous in its description with people leaping 20 feet in the air and all that, but this would indicate that there was, in fact, war. The Jacob actually fought and conquered at least a portion of the land of Canaan before he went into Egypt. So when he came out of Canaan, he wasn't you know, sojourning in other people's lands like Abraham and Isaac. He was coming out of a portion of land that he had conquered. He had settled. He had made a permanent establishment. And when Israel, when Israel comes out of Egypt, and re they're, they're not just taking the land from the people over there. They are retaking the land that Jacob apparently had already conquered. Anyways, we will see you in the next one.